Our next esteemed speaker is no other person but Dr. Omar Halak. Dr. Omar Halak is a consultant interventional cardiologist. He's head cardiology department, King's College Hospital, Dubai, UAE. He is president, Gulf chapter of International Society of Endovascular Specialist, chairman of Portis International Conference, clinical professor at the Baylor's University, Texas, USA, clinical professor, MBR University, Dubai, UAE. Dr. Halak has received his postgraduate training and research in the United States at UIC Chicago, Northwestern University, LSU in New Orleans, American Board Certified in Cardiovascular Diseases, Interventional Cardiology, Vascular Medicine, Endovascular Medicine, Nuclear Cardiology, and Internal Medicine. Previous Head of the Department of Cardiology Department at St. Francis Hospital in USA, and he has performed thousands of procedures, including cardiac and uh, peripheral and vascular interventions. His deliberations always leave behind an everlasting imprint on the mind of the audience. I'm sure you will enjoy the flashes of your expertise. I have the pleasure of participating in the 40s conference at Dubai, and whenever his conference is organized, Dubai glows with 40s conference. With this, I like to hand over uh, the mic to Dr. Piyush Jain to conduct this session. Dr. Piyush Jain, please. Yeah, thank you very much, Professor Manoria. So uh, after the uh, very nice talk by Professor uh, Sala, who also dwelled upon a little bit on uh, the injection treatment for uh, dyslipidemia, I now invite Dr. Omar Hala to uh, dwell in greater detail upon this topic because this is the future. Uh, so Dr. Omar Hala, uh, please proceed with your presentation. Hi, my name is Omar Halak. I'm an interventional cardiologist and the head of cardiovascular department at, King, at King's College Hospital, Dubai. I'm the chairman of uh, Dr. Tuitrat Catheter Solution 40S. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Memoria for, uh, and, the, and the organizing committee to invite me to give this talk at this uh, Metabolic Syndrome Conference. Uh, my talk today about uh, injectable lipid lowering medication. Uh, what is the data behind it? As we all know that the uh, benefit of lowering the LDL, all the data show that lowering the LDL it will lower the cardiovascular events. And that works for the primary prevention, for secondary prevention, for acute coronary syndrome. And we know that uh, using statin to lower the LDL, it can lower the cardiovascular event about 30%. Now, there was a question a while ago, can we lower the LDL with something else other than the statin and still continue benefit of lowering the LDL? And a study done using isotomide add, adding to the statin, and in this study, they found that adding isotamide to the statin uh, can lower the LDL a bit farther. So this is a 69 of the average LDL with the statin alone. When isotamide was added, it dropped to 53 milligram. And that it translated to decrease the clinical events. So there was 6.4 relative risk reduction when isotomide was added and the LDL was lowered by non-statin. And that proves the point that lowering LDL was, other than statin, still had a potential benefit of lowering the, the cardiovascular events. There was, as we know, some issue with the statin and we will have higher rate of discontinuing the statin uh, because of uh, especially side effects, muscle aches and liver enzyme elevation or elevated sugar and so on. 
So, of course, um, we will start to look for some other options to help lower the LDL. And there was a new discovery in 2003, uh, and a new gene was discovered. And that gene uh, was responsible for production of protein called PCSK9. Alternatively, if the gene was hyperactive, let's say, and there is more of the PCSK9, then the LDL will be very high and the patient will have early cardiovascular disease. But if that gene was not working for whatever reason and there is lack of reduction of PCSK9, then the patient will have lower cholesterol and significantly lower cardiovascular disease. This is a, a data show that when you have loss of function of PCSK9, which is decrease the SPSK9 in, in the blood, the average LDL will be lower. The mean LDL will be about 100 compared to a normal uh, uh, population, which is 138. So it was about a 28% reduction of the LDL in general for people who have this kind of uh, genetic, difficult, uh, genetic uh, abnormality. Interestingly, that even though there was only 28% reduction of the LDL, but there was 88% reduction of cardiovascular events. Of course, because that's a lifelong reduction of the LDL. This is for patients with normal population versus the ones that have genetic problems. So that would uh, trigger a thought if can do something to imitate this natural mutation. And the idea of PCS can have antibodies or inhibitors came along, and there was two molecules, one is called amirucumab, uh, and the other one is ivirucumab. And those two molecules, they inhibit the uh, BCS canine. How does it work? Normally, the, the, there is a production of uh, LDL receptors, and the LDL, LDL receptor sit in the surface of the hepatic cell. The LDL come and kind of attach or sit on this receptor. And if that happens, so the receptor and the LDL get inside the cell, and inside the cell, that will remove the LDL receptors and bring the LDL and lysis from the LDL. And the receptor go back again to the surface to catch another LDL. And if the number of the LDL receptor is normal, so that it keeps cleaning the LDL from the circulation. Now, if there is increased production of the PCSK9, that now the LDL receptor, of course, still attached to the LDL, but PCSK9 sit with this complex. This complex get inside the cell, but because of the presence of PCSK9, the whole thing now get destructive, and uh, lysosome the whole uh, complex, including the receptor. So there is the receptor will be destructive and there is no more receptor coming back to bring more LDL. So it will be decreased receptor number, and that will decrease the ability of clearing the LDL from the circulation. So the idea is to get some antibodies to prevent those species can inhibitors to work, so clear the LDL receptor from the PCS canine and let the LDL receptor during their uh, normal um, cycle of bringing the LDL in, inside and go back again to bring another one. How fast does it work? Well, it worked very fast, actually. Here is when you inject the medicine, for this example, alirucumab, and it stay in the system for about a month or so, but the peak in about two weeks. And as soon as the BCS canon inhibitor injected, the BCS canon trapped immediately within a very short period to down to, to baseline to, to the to a very low level. And as soon as the LD, uh, as soon as the antibodies start to come down, the LD, the BCS can inhibitor, the BCS canon start to go up. So this is the inhibitor of the uh, BCS canon start to come down, the BCS canon start to go up. 
And the LDL, as soon as the BCSK9 starts to come down, the LDL starts to come down. And within about two weeks, it starts to come up again. How effective is it? Well, it's very effective. Turn to be both molecule bring the LDL about 60%. This is the one with maximal tolerative statin. This is the one with um, maximal tolerative statin in addition to alurecumab, but about 60%. And if look at same, this is the maximal tolerative statin, and this is the added uh, if look at and that is about 60%. Clinical outcome. Well, uh, this is a two major study, four year study, as you all familiar with it. The design of the study, 27,000 patients with stable cardiovascular disease, history of MR, stroke, or uh, PAD. Um, they, with the LDL above 1.8, they randomized to um, maximum to rate statin or adding epilocomab in addition to the statin and follow up after that. And here was the result. There was about 60% of the level and that it translated to decrease the cardiovascular event. Uh, this is the one placebo, which is the maximum to rate statin uh, with or without zithamide. And this is with adding uh, epilocomab. So there was decrease of those uh, outcome, and even the heart outcome alone, the cardiovascular based amount stroke also decreased significantly, about 15% here, about 20% here. And this is for the other molecule, which is alerocomab. Uh, RBC trial, they had 18, about almost 19,000 patients, same thing, randomized to placebo, which is maximum tolerated statin and azithromycin with alurocumab versus same thing in addition to alurocumab. And here the result also, there was drop about 60% of the MDL, and here is a curve, and there's 12%, 12.5% event in the alurocumab group versus 14.5, with about 15% relative risk reduction over five, five uh, four years period. So, BCA scan inhibitors lower LDL about 60%, and some patients the LDL lowered to less than one millimole. And lowering the LDL that much have about 15% relative risk reduction for the primary outcome. A question always asked: How low should we go on LDL? Well. The data so far we have, this is the average and the other, lower is better. And here is a adjusted, adjusted event rate, and this is the level of the LDL. And as you can see, if you, the more you drop the LDL, the more will be drop of the cardiovascular event. And so far, we have data up to less than 25 milligram. But still, you can have continuous reduction of the event. And, uh, and of course, we check on the data as it's safe to go that low. Uh, in this uh, study, they had about 500 patients where the LDL was really low, less than 0.25 millimole. And this is the event rate between the LDL less than 2.6 millimole versus the LDL more than 2.6 millimole, and there was further benefit of lowering LDL farther. There's very low LDL level safe, and that is the data here. This is the um, side effects, and this one for a very low LDL, less than 0.26 millimole versus more than versus more than 2.6 millimole. And as we can see, there is no significant difference with the, between those uh, serious side effects. And actually, interestingly, there was no significant dif difference in the drug discontinuation. So apparently, uh, very low LDL so far in the short term seem to be safe. 
And here the other, uh, if you take the, the group with LDL more than 2.6, between 1.8 and 1.6, and 1.3 and 1.8, or even less than, 1, less than 0.5 millimole, as you can see, the side effects is very much similar in all those groups, including in neurocyte diabetes, cancer, cataract, all total side effects. So between all those level of LDL, there was no significant difference uh, about the rate of the side effects. And here's a neurocognitive uh, elevated liver enzyme, elevated CDK, non cardiovascular death, or hemorrhagic stroke. Really, there was no significant difference uh, among the patients with different level, very, very low level of LDL, less than 0.5 versus level of more than 2.6. And uh, for liver enzyme, it was similar for 2.3 versus 2.4. And for elevated CBK, it also there was no difference. Same thing for all those uh, major side effects. There was no significant difference between that placebo group versus an incremental group. Summary, uh, PCS canal inhibitors can lower the LDL about 60% with um, of course, it's adding the statin, and sometimes that LDL may drop to less than one millimole. Actually, commonly, I see my patient, they have the LDL drop to less than one millimole, less than 40 milligram uh, of LDL. There is a strong relationship uh, of achieving the lower LDL and decreasing the cardiovascular event, no increase in the safety events with very low achieved LDL level, less than 20 milligrams up to five years, uh, this data suggests probably we need to look for a even lower target what the current guideline recommend. Now there is a new injectable medication for lowering the LDL. It seems to be also an attract attractive option, which is this small interfering RNA uh, in glycerin. How does it work? Um, we we'll go back to the thing we talked about earlier when you have the uh, LDL attached to the LD, uh, LDL receptor, it's going inside, the LDL get lysosome, and the, L, the receptor go back again. If you have PCS canine inhibitor in it, if you have, sorry, if you have the PCS canine on this model, on this uh, uh, attached to the receptor, um, and this one here actually, it will distract the receptors and will be no more receptor to come back again. If you put the inhibitors against the BCS guideline, so the receptor will be safe. Now the other way, the new therapy is actually get to the root of the origin of the BCS guideline with this mechanism stop the production of BCS guideline. So there will be less BCS guideline in the circulation to distract the receptors. And uh, there was quite a few studies, uh, all in three, uh, all in nine, ten, and eleven, and consistent result about fifty percent reduction of the LDL compared to placebo. I mean, placebo the maximal tolerated statin with or without is it mine? Here is the way the injection given, given day one, and given after ninety days, and then after that every six months. And here is the average LDL with those studies. It was 4 or 2.7 or 2.7 in this, uh, those studies. And uh, high intensity statin was 73%, uh, almost 70%, 78%. Isotamide was added 50%, 10%, and 7%. This is the baseline in those studies. And uh, the achieved uh, target uh, was less than uh, 1.8 about 74% of the patients received the injection uh, achieved the less than 1.8. And to achieve less than 1.3, about 62% achieved that target. So this is significant improvement of the, um, achieving the target. Of course, uh, it was found also that this uh, molecule uh, decreased non-HDL, uh, out little aggregate little A, and slight increase of HDL. Side effects, uh, uh, all those side effects sitting here, 
is kind of somewhat similar between the placebo and the antiserin. As you can see, the risk ratio is most of them is close to, to, to one, uh, except of course the reaction at the site of the injection was 10 times more than the placebo. And here is other uh, uh, side effect. It's somewhat really similar between the placebo and the injection, except the injection side, there was more side effects. Here to get an idea of how, how kind of different medication for the cholesterol uh, lowering. If you take the, the pills, you have to take 365 tablets of statin uh, to, to get the MDL key uh, in the lower side. If you have to inject, use the injection, the PCS scan inhibitor, you have to take it every two weeks. So you end up with 26 injections. And if you do the new medication, you only get two shots a year. And uh, there is, of course, some idea, a new, new study on the vaccination for lowering the cholesterol. And probably the ultimate treatment will be genetic therapy. When you get injection, it fits the genetic production of the LDR and then patients will be cured. The interesting uh, seems to be safe that um, it will be uh, the side effect is was similar except the side reaction of the injection, it lowered the LDL about 50%. The clinical outcome is still in progress. We don't have really clinical outcome so far. Conclusion, uh, injectable lipid lowering medication are effective in lowering the LDL between 50 to 60% in the top of maximum rate of statin and azithromycin. Except for increased reaction at the site of injection, no significant increase of side effect compared to placebo. BCA scan inhibitors showed about 15% relative risk reduction in the clinical outcome, but still waiting for clinical outcome study for implicit. Uh, I'd like to invite all of you to the meeting we have annually, usually mid-February. This coming year, 2023, will be 9 to 11 February. Uh, we'd like to have it hybrid. We'd like to have all of you joining us in Dubai. And uh, you can go to the website, uh, otsconference.com. And thank you so much. Um, I'd be glad to answer questions at the end of the session. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Halak. I would like to ask you two questions. One is regarding incliceran. Since it affects the RNA, has the effect of incliceran uh, adequately studied on the incidence of cancer in, among animals and humans? That is number one. So could you please answer this question and then I will ask you the second question. Uh, thank you so much for that question. I and mean, as you know, this uh, medicine, it is very new. And um, the data we have uh, so far, it uh, didn't show any um, uh, alarming signal of increasing cancer. And um, also there was issue about, you know, uh, COVID because it's also work on the uh, small interfering RNA and um, with the COVID vaccine. And there is no data to show any um, interaction or potential side effect at all. Thank you very much. The second question is related to PS PCSK9. Uh, both the trials, four-year as well as ODC, they had a limited follow-up. You will agree with me that we don't know the long-term effects of PCSK9. Exactly, exactly. So in this cohort of uh, patients, both in ODC as well in four-year, are they planning to do an active surveillance of these patients, uh, post-trial period surveillance, like uh, you had you know, surveillance in, in UKPDS and so many other trials? Yes actually, yes, actually, they have a registry for those patients who completed the, the trial, the randomization. They follow up for registry uh, five years, and they have a published data on the follow-up up to five years, and they found out that the result, they have it from the beginning, it was very much similar. There was a slight increase of the LDL, or if you want to call it less decrease of the LDL uh, over five years, 
uh, with only very small elevation of the LDL. So the LDL it dropped about 60% in the beginning uh, over uh, the first uh, uh, three or four years. But five years afterward, there was minimal elevation of the LDL. And uh, a lot of uh, theory behind it, uh, there are some antibody kind of start to form against the actual antibody, uh, uh, against the, uh, the, the inhibitors, or is it uh, people kind of uh, down-regulated their statin dosage? Um, nobody knows for sure. There is a few numbers of antibody against the inhibitors found on those patients taking the medicine, but there is no really uh, confirm relationship that's causing the, the elevation of the LDL back again. But up, we have a data up to five years um, post-treatment. Uh, post, uh, but no uh, clinical immunological reactions like uh, no. in case of hypoplastic no. angitis of the ODC? No, the only, thing, the only thing they found that there is some patient, very rare number actually is only like finger count numbers of patients develop antibodies against those inhibitors. And those did not cause any clinical uh, side effects. Uh, however, it, uh, it may explain why some of those patients, the LDL start to come up a little bit again. Do you think that patients with atopy, uh, with the increased IgE levels, should be a little cautious in you know instituting PCSK9 inhibitors because they may be more prone to allergic reactions or there is no, no clinical relevance of that? I don't think there's any clinical relevance because those antibodies are very specific for the one who have atopy or some uh, elevated AGE, they have some reaction to particular uh, allergens, but those are very specific antibody to PCS kind of unlikely. And actually from the data, they didn't report any single case of allergic reaction or, or that kind of uh, uh, anaphylactic shock. Right, thank you. So no long-term safety signals and minimal activity. I would say medium, medium uh, duration. I mean, five yeah, years to medium, medium duration. Yes, yes. Yes, we need uh, more, more nice life statics. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very nice lecture, mesmerizing. Uh, how do you thank look you at the prospect? Me. How do you look at the prospect of success of PCSK9 vaccine in future? I think the vaccine problem, the way to go, and uh, actually, it's, they are working on it very hard. Um, but the, 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 really, the ultimate treatment, as, uh, as I mentioned, is going to be the genetic therapy, which they are all working on very hard also. And if they come up with some genetic therapy, you fix that uh, gene, and then you're done for life. You just have it fixed once. You got a shot. You got fixed. And... Uh, and and will be fixed. Actually, my my brother and uh, he work in USA. He he working on that uh, genetic therapy. And I told him slow down a little bit because if you fix it, I'll be out of business. <laughs> so uh, they are working very hard. I mean, they I would say it could take at least probably ten years to be clinically available. But uh, there is a lot of um, uh, kind of positive signal about the genetic therapy, and that will be the ultimate treatment. Thank you, Dr. Alex.
insights from the world's best medical minds. You are watching the right doctors.com.